Hey, what's going on? People, in this video I'll be showcasing the best items for flak in Borderlands 3. From snipers and shotguns to artifacts and class mods, we'll be covering it all, so let's crack into it. And we start with assault rifles. First up, the Monarch, which can come in all elements including kinetic, and has an increased chance to drop from Kilovolt, you fight around here in Letra City. It can also drop from the Trial of Supremacy on True Trial Difficulty, or from the Guardian Takedown Bosses. Its red text reads, The Deadly Sting of the Monarch. I didn't know that pretty orange butterfly could sting, but with this in Flak's hands, it certainly can. What makes this weapon so good on Flak is, essentially, its bullet count which is either times 4 or times 8. I generally go for the times 4 variant because I like my ammo, but the times 8 will drop bosses even faster. The projectile count and its fire rate in tandem with Stackbot, a key class mod which we'll get to a bit later in the video, has this weapon firing on all cylinders. Stackbot keeps the damage monstrously high, the head count reduces the time that you're not in fade away. If you wanted even more damage, you can always pull out the bipod, which will hamper your movement, but increase the projectile count twofold, which is just ridiculous. Another great assault rifle for Flak is the Rowan's Call, an elemental Jacob's weapon that comes in fire, shock, and radiation elements. It has an increased chance to drop from Red Rain at the end of the Slaughter Star 3000. The Rowan's Call is kind of the perfect storm when it comes to Flak. Increased critical damage thanks to that Jacob stamp, and its critical hits return two bullets to your magazine and ricochet two bullets to nearby enemies. If you shoot them in the face more often than the toes, then you'll be firing this gun forever and dealing insane amounts of damage at the same time. Those ricochets that also deal splash damage will tear through mobs that you're not even shooting at, and it's got plenty of power to take on the big boys too. If you're looking for something a little more mobile but just as deadly, you can't go wrong calling Rowan. Another top choice assault rifle that you can't go wrong with is the Clairvoyance, which belongs to the Guns Love and Tentacles DLC, and only drops from Critchy, who you can find around here in Curse Haven. The Clairvoyance is another elemental Jacob's assault rifle, this one only comes in Cryo, and comes in a number of different variants. You've got the semi-automatic, the fully automatic, or the masher variant, and really it's up to you, but I like to mash things up, and not potato. Landing criticals will glue bombs to your enemies faces, which will explode in unison. It's always fun piling them up and watching the rest of that health bar disappear, and it can make big health bars disappear too. Last up for assault rifles is the Lucian's Call. Like the Rowan's Call, it has an increased chance to drop from the Slaughter Star 3000, this time from blue fire, but you can also get it by trading Ludograms with Crazy Earl. The Lucian's Call is unique in the way that it has a Jacob's effect, but is made by Vladov, meaning less damage, but higher fire rate. Like the Rowan's Call, it ricochets projectiles on critical hits, two of them, and also returns two to your magazine. With its high fire rate, you'll see bullets flying everywhere, absolutely tearing it up. It's a nice alternative to the Rowan's Call, and handles mobbing a little more fluidly. Now for SMGs, and the first one I have for you is the Crit, which you can only obtain by tipping Moxie aboard Sanctuary 3. The Crit is great for Flak in two key ways. It's got a massive critical hit damage bonus, and it heals you, and plus it smells like Moxie. So 3. The Crit bonus sits at 150%, which is great if you're building for criticality, and the lifestyle solves a big problem for Flak, and that's the sponginess, which is weird because I'm pretty sure those arms are metal. Either way, on higher mayhem levels, one shot will completely fill your health bar. It's a great weapon, and it just screams, hold me Flacky. Actually hold it because it might fall out of your hands. That's another thing it does. The next and last SMG I have is the Flipper, which belongs to the Bounty of Blood DLC and has an increased chance to drop from Minosaur around here in Blood Sun Canyon, but also drops in the True Trial of Discipline. Again with Flak, what we're looking for here is projectile count. The Flipper starts off by firing one projectile, but as you continue holding down the trigger, that increases to three, then five, then seven, then nine. And I'm not saying no in German. Yeah, it's a good gun. And what makes it good on flag not only is its damage, 
but that projectile count, which helps us to keep our action skills going, with Fadeaway in particular helping us crit with 9 projectiles. Add Stackbot to the mix, and we're away laughing. Moving on to pistols now, and first up is the Tizzy, which has an increased chance to drop from this chest room within arm's race, but also drops from the Trial of Instinct on True Trial Difficulty. The Tizzy is an absolute boss mounter, and so is Flak. The two just go hand in hand. The Tizzy comes in times 2 and times 3 variants, and goes across the board with the elements. As it overheats, its fire rate increases up towards monstrous levels. I wouldn't recommend mobbing with it, it's just not going to go the distance, but a times 3 variant is absolutely perfect for dropping bosses. Another pistol I'd recommend for Flak is the Light Show, which comes in all the elements including Kinetic, and has an increased chance to drop from Lazodactyl, who you fight around here, in the Obsidian Forest, as part of the Bounty of Blood DLC. I'd describe the light show as a more mobile monarch. It fires 4 projectiles in a circular pattern, which absolutely tear it up. Whether you're running through takedowns or going on a boss hunt, this thing will have your flag. I'm in black. I'm in back. Moving on to launches, and I only have one, and it's the Plague Bearer, which has an increased chance to drop from the Warden, you fight around here in the Anvil. There's a few great launches in the game, but none of them suit flat quite like this one. After fully charging, it'll fire a slow moving orb, circled by smaller projectiles which will break off during flight and hunt down any enemies that are passing by. With Flak's ability to make those secondary projectiles hit crits, and two fang for a second orb, this thing will dominate battlefields all on its own. Time for shotguns, and each flak player should have a Howlwalker, which you can get from Road Dog around here in the Splinterlands. And it always comes with locked parts, so whatever one you get, that's the one you'll stick with for life, so treat it right, okay? It fires 10 blazing projectiles that burn through enemies. Because it's manufactured by Jacobs, it has increased critical hit damage, and each critical hit will cause a carnage of ricocheting bullets. Because it is a double barrel shotgun, generally you can only fire once before you pull the trigger, but with enough mag size boosts you can comfortably get that to 2, and leave no trace can help you with that as well. Jacob's shotguns as a rule of thumb are great on flak, and this one just happens to be the best. It's not just Jacob's shotguns that flak can have a whole lot of fun with, the reflux will suit you to a T. It's another weapon that belongs to Mayhem 6 or above, and can only drop from Genevieve around here in Voracious Canopy. What makes the Reflux so great is its unique effect, which causes corrosive ties to link out and attach to nearby enemies whenever you're shooting at someone else. Each pallet has a chance to create a link, and one enemy can be affected by up to 5 at a time. What makes it incredibly suited to Flak is just that. Each link will proc skills like headcount, helping you to get your action skill back almost in a flash, and leave no trace will have you massively extending the life of each magazine. It comes in a x7 or x14 variant, with the latter consuming 2 ammo per shot, but with more pellets comes more links, and therefore more mayhem. It's a fantastic mobbing shotgun, and is best suited to flak. The last shotgun I have for you is the Guardian, not for shooting, but for holding in your hand. You can get one from the Fallen Heroes Vault card, which is obtained as part of the Director's Cut. The Guardian increases all of your damage by up to 500% the further you are away from your enemies. So with Flak and a Pit build, or a Rack Attack Peregrine setup, or something a little bit different, this is what you'll want to be holding. Nothing else can increase damage quite like it, and you'll want something like a U-Rat Anointment to top it all off. Moving to snipers now, and first up, the Sandhawk, an elemental dull weapon that, like the Plague Bearer and Monarch, belongs to Mayhem 6 or above, and can only be found by fighting Katagawa Jr. around here in Atlas HQ. The Sandhawk is all about damage, and that fits Flak incredibly well. 
It fired seven hard-hitting projectiles at an incredible speed that do unworldly amounts of damage. It consumes three ammo per shot, so is only suited to the bossing arena, and Fadeaway takes its DPS up another level. If you're looking for a sniper rifle that's a little more traditional, you can't go past the Skull Masher, which belongs to the Guns Love and Tentacles DLC, with an increased chance to drop from Esther around here in Skidmore Basin, but can also be picked up from the True Trial of Cunning. The Skull Masher is a sniper and a shotgun put together. It's a snot gun and it's great. Each shot fires five devastating rounds and they come much quicker than you'd expect. Its projectile count is great for proccing headcount and stacking stackbot and comes with plenty of power too. It's easily my favorite sniper rifle and you'll want the dastardly prefix for extra critical hit damage. Moving on to class mods now, we start with the Peregrine, which has an increased chance to drop from Dr. Benedict as part of the Psycho Krieg DLC, and you can find them around here in the Benediction of Pain. As mentioned briefly before, the Peregrine class mod is great for dropping grenades on your enemies using your rack. That's because that's exactly what it does. Holding the Guardian in your hand and pairing it with high damage grenade mods which we'll cover in depth later will have you dishing out monstrous damage from a distance. It's pretty crazy how much damage you can deal by just strapping grenades to the feet of your rack. Best roles for this class mod include as much as you can on eager to impress, ideally you want to avoid ambush predator. And for stats, splash damage, splash radius, grenade damage, melee damage, action skill cooldown, they all work well. Another great class mod for Flak is Stackbot, which has an increased chance to drop from Jackbot as part of the Handsome Jackpot DLC, and you fight him in the VIP tower. Whenever you successfully land a critical hit, you'll gain a stack of 5% increased weapon damage. It stacks up to 99 times, which is almost 500% more weapon damage. With skills like Megavore, which provide a 20% base crit chance, and things like fadeaway which guarantee them, you can stack this bot high and fast. The problem is any non-critical hit will reset the bonus, so I recommend only using it in crit focus setups. As far as roles for this one, you generally want some in pack tactics, but you can't really go wrong. As far as stat roles, manufacturer crit will give you the most weapon damage boost, a general weapon damage across the board is also great, and you can't go wrong with cooldown rate or mag size either. A class mod that you'll definitely want regardless of your build is the Bounty Hunter. This one belongs to the base game and has an increased chance to drop from Lieutenant Preston who you fight around here in the Tazendir Ruins. The Bounty Hunter is a class mod you can't go wrong with. It has a 3% chance for you to activate any purchased hunt kill skill by simply dealing gun damage. Not only that, bosses are treated as humans, beasts and robots for those skills. When the Peregrine class mod focuses on getting your rack to do the work and Stackbot requires consistent criticals to be most effective, this one works regardless, both mobbing and bossing in any setup, and it's just something you should have in your back pocket. Frenzy is the least effective skill that can roll on it, and for stat rolls it's really up to you. The last class mod every flat player should have is the Red Fang which you can get from Tyrant of Instinct in the trial of the same name. The Red Fang is primarily a pet focused class mod because while Gamma Burst is active, your pet will taunt all enemies. That makes it great for survivability, but what it's also great for is increasing your pet's damage thanks to its ability to roll with ferocity, which is what I'd recommend if you want your pet to fetch you a boss or two. If you're going that way, then for stat rolls, I'd highly recommend action skill damage, splash damage is great as well, and of course, cooldown rate. And for pets, it's hard to look past the loader bot. Oh, yeah. On to grenade mods now, and we'll start with the couple that fit the Peregrine setup. First up, the Ghast Call, which belongs to the Bloody Harvest event and drops most often from Captain Haunt, with a very slim chance to drop from Loot Ghost. With this equipped, you'll throw a skull that, on explosion, will spawn three vengeful spirits that'll hunt down your enemies. It has fantastic mobbing potential and is great against bosses too, making it perfect for a peregrine build. 
It only comes corrosive, can't come anointed, and the rare Vindicator variant is the one you'll want for maximum damage. Next up is the Fish Slap, which belongs to another event, this time the Cartel event. Dropping from of course Joey Ultraviolet, but Fish Slap and Tyrone Smallums as well. This grenade is the most busted grenade in the game, dealing melee damage, which makes it not only unique, but deadly. Becoming one with the punchy enables this to do some crazy things, dropping bosses with one whip of its tail, and it's even better when you get your rack to do it. You'll want triple link rolls for ultimate damage, and it works best with an action skill and elemental anointment. When you're not looking to deal damage with your grenades, its piss is a great option. It has an increased chance to drop from Sloth, who you can find around here in Conrad's Hold. When this detonates, it'll douse the area in liquid, and if that liquid touches an enemy, they'll take 20% increased damage for 6 seconds. It's great for making flak even more deadly, and I like to have one for each of the action skill and elemental anointment. The last grenade mod I suggest you pick up if you're playing flak is the Hunter Seeker, which has an increased chance to drop from Dragon Rage, around here in the Anvil. What makes the Hunter Seeker great is it fires bullets, allowing it to initiate skills like Leave No Trace and Headcount, along with all hunt kill skills if you've got the Bounty Hunter class mod equipped. Recurring and Mitosis are the best prefixes, but please make sure you don't use it with Stackbot. Two artifacts now, and the first one I recommend is the Pearl of Ineffable Knowledge, obtained from Guns Love and Tentacles after completing the quest The Call of Githian. This artifact is great because it's just a simple way to increase your damage. Landing shots in quick succession grant a gun damage boost of 1%, but when stacked up to 15 times you get a 90% bonus on top of that. Combined with the multi-projectile weapons already mentioned, this artifact is a no-brainer for flak. The Company Man is another great artifact. This one belongs to the Director's Cut, dropping every single time from Hemivorous the Invincible around here in Dark Thirst Dominion. It grants manufacturer specific bonuses, with 50% damage, 40% mag sides, and 50% crit damage being the best. It provides a big boost to a brand you love. And as Flak, how can you look past Jacobs? The last one I'd recommend is the Deathless, which you can get from Phoenix, around here in the Splinterlands. I'd recommend this class mod if you're exclusively using U-Rad Anointments, as it caps your health to 1, giving you 150% bonus radiation damage all the time. It'll make Flag even more of a glass cannon, but it's well worth it. Oh, and if you're set up for Rack Stab, you'll definitely want an Unleash the Dragon for bossing, and a Static Charge for mobbing. We end with Shields, and how can you go past the Revolter? It belongs to the Director's Cut, with an increased chance to drop from Sumo, who you fight around here in Eschaton Row. The Revolter pretty much blows all shields out of the water, giving you 200% bonus shock damage and a 50% fire rate boost while shock enraged. And to get shock enraged, you just gotta get angry cause your shield breaks. Combine that with an action skill start anointment and you can get that bonus each time you use your action skill. Rack attack will have it constantly up, but with the weapons I've mentioned procking head count all day long, you'll reap its rewards with fade away too. The Frozen Heart is an incredibly fun shield on Flak. It can only be dropped from Aurelia, who you fight around here in Black Barrel Cellars. What makes this shield so fun on Flak is its Cryo Novas that erupt every time it breaks. Combine that with an action skill start anointment and rack attack, and you can cause Novas all over the place, freezing the entire battlefield. Better yet, each Nova heals you for 30% of the Nova damage dealt, which solves the survivability problem, while providing a unique way to play. And if you're set up for Rackstab, you'll definitely need a Stinger, which you can get from Anthema at the Guardian Takedown. It's similar in playstyle to the Frozen Heart, but its Novas deal a whole lot of melee damage. 